Hello everybody. Um, ¿Se me oye? ¿Se me escucha? Estoy ahí. Hello, hello, hello. So here we are. Um, hello everybody. <laughs> Let's see friendly faces around. Awesome. Welcome to this uh, field recordings special show. Um, for those who don't know me, and I'm going to be repeating that most of the time, uh, I'm Edu Comelles, and today we're going to uh, kind of deep dive into my sound, Soundscape archive. But at the same time, um, this session is not really well planned. It's part of the things we do um, on Ruido Virico, the other main show uh, on this uh, Twitch channel. And the purpose is uh, basically to experiment a little bit with the format, something we have been doing for a while on on Audio Talaya and since the COVID-19 thing. So one of the ideas was to make a, a show dedicated to field recordings, to soundscape, and I th we thought that uh, an interesting possibility will be to to do one dedicated to, to explore um, um, the archives of, uh, of different people involved in this in this world of um, of the field recordings. Uh, so I'm the guinea pig. Um, so I'm gonna start myself, and hopefully, if, if I feel uh, comfortable enough with this format, I will continue in doing it in the future with with uh, guest people. Um, for those uh, who are regular, para los que sois uh, habituales de del canal. Eh, bueno, pues aquí estamos una vez más. Voy a intentar hacer la, la sesión íntegra eh, en inglés. Eh, eso no significa que en el chat eh, estéis obligados a contestar en inglés, pero y trataré de contestaros en castellano, así que trataré que sea eh, lo más bilingüe posible, pero eh, enfocándome principalmente hacia una audiencia anglosajona y así pues los que estáis en España también practicamos un poco el inglés, que siempre viene bien. Uh, I was telling to the audience, to, to the local ones, that I will be doing the whole session in English and I will speak also in Spanish if, if the, um, the situation requires it or if I don't know how to say anything in English. Um, but the main purpose is that this is going to be an English, fully English broadcast, but um, open to bilingual or even trilingual. If somebody wants to ask anything in Catalan or in other languages, um, it, it depends. If you're speaking Russian, I won't be able to understand a um, thing. But <laughs> if this is a Roman language, I think I can I can handle it. I, in any case, the structure of the um, show is not is not predefined. I have no exactly no clue. I have like three files already open on my computer, and I don't know uh, where to get started. But the the idea is that um, you all guys, uh, if you feel like it, at any time jump in on the chat and ask, demand or mm, propose to listen to some specific recording or um, I'm open to that. It's it's going to be a completely improvised um, show. So if you feel like, hey, Edu, can you show us some recordings about that specific place? Do you have something around that topic? Do you have any kind of recording of this kind of situation or that kind of natural landscape? Um, if I do have it, we can listen to it. And if you have any questions, um, um, ideas, tops, whatever, uh, just feel free to ask uh, at any time on the chat, and I I'll, um, we can shift the interest of the um, of the um, show at any time, just depending on what do you feel like uh, listening to. I have a really rough uh, script of what I want to play, um, but this can be all break apart in no time if if you feel like it. So yeah, feel free to bother me and <laughs> and ask anything you want. Uh, we'll see. Um, Ninety-nine percent of what we're gonna listen is is in Europe. So so don't ask me about Antarctica or things like Chris Watson would record because I haven't been there. So um, sorry if I'm not that, that exotic, but you can ask for recordings from almost the entirety of Spain uh, and beyond, and maybe. Um, we can get started if you feel like it. Um, I was trying to to find a recording uh, that defined um, the beginning of my 
of my work on that on on the field of field recordings but i didn't i didn't find anything like so, uh, enough interesting to show to you so i i jump across with um with the opening track of uh, one of my albums um uh, back in 2014 i did an album called camino parte primera which is probably the last album i did um F uh, fully done with field recordings. I, I will try to be there inside the field recordings frame for the whole session, but I, I might jump to another um, genres maybe, but but mostly I will I will be like hardcore um, field recordings stuff. So um, the first recording I'm gonna we're gonna listen is a recording from the this album Camino Parte Primera, which is um, an album I recorded during the. Um, the Saint James Way, the Spanish people Camino de Santiago. I did. Uh, it's called the, the album is called Camino Parte Primera. It's like uh, the way uh, part one. Um, but um, it's it's called uh, part one because um, I just did like the first two hundred kilometers of of this of this pilgrimage way, and and what you can listen on the whole album that you can find it on my Bandcamp. It just it covers that part of the of the Saint James Way. Uh, hopefully someday I'll do the other two parts or maybe another part, we'll see. But I wanted to start with this recording because I think it encapsulated mm, pretty much okay the kind of recording I like to do. This is a single take done with um, um, pretty inexpensive microphones and this is something I'm going to be referring to for a while. Um, I'm going to show you 90% of what I've I'm gonna show you today. It's done with the same microphones, the ones I, I've been building over the years. Um, they are lavalier microphones done with electric capsules, um, which you can buy. And if you want to ask, I can show you the link to get it. So 90% of what you're gonna listen, it's recorded through these kind of microphones or just directly with the built-in microphones from my Zoom recorder. At some points, I'm using Rode NT5 in ORTF position, stuff like that but mainly it's all like diy microphones i use um and yeah this first recording it's called ronces valles and it it's titled under the place where the mm, traditional pilgrimage to santiago starts which is this town of ronces valles that it's only like a, a monastery and a and a, and a place for uh, hosting the the pilgrims who they arrive and that was recorded the night before we started or or path and it was um it was by the way in easter uh pretty early easter this that year 2014 it was march already so it was pretty cold rainy and and kind of moody um yeah so that's the recording i'm gonna show you for starters it's not too long um i will try to keep um recording shorter if you feel like listening to longer pieces we can also do that it's just up to you guys so yeah let's jump into this
Yeah, that was pretty short, in fact. <laughs> I haven't listened to this for a while. But the interesting thing, I'm, well, at least what for me is interesting about this this um, first recording is that it's uh, it was done in one single take. It, and basically it, it shows a scene that um, you can guess it, but it's not that easy maybe, but the, um, the bells are... are um, sounding nine, there is like nine bells, which it marks like nine o'clock in the night, and by nine thirty, the closes of the monastery close. So any pilgrim has to be there uh, in time if they want to get in to sleep, and they don't want to sleep uh, on the outside. So that mm, movement of foot uh, around the courtyard, which obviously it's it's full of stones and it's partially raining, uh, it's the footsteps of of the last pilgrims entering the building before before the night. It is strange because um, all pilgrims entering Roncesvalles at this time, uh, they are fresh. They come fresh from bus, from train, from any kind of transportation, but they don't, they are not tired because they haven't been on previous, um, uh, they haven't been in on route yet. So it's pretty weird to go to, go to sleep uh, at that point at nine o'clock in the night. Um, but that was it, that, that was the whole recording and w was one of the ideas behind um, the album Camino Parte Primera that it has to be, it had to be done in really short takes um, and it was partially edited on my head during the walk so if you listen to the whole album um, you'll see that all tracks are pretty pretty mm, pretty f fast tracks they are like super short uh, and that's um, that's completely deliberated I, I I was looking for that because. One of the things I have I found hard is to listen to field recordings for a long extended period of time. Uh, maybe this show is not the perfect example for that, but it's like that. Um, and it's and it's a, it's a way to work. And and across this album, um, I think I'm gonna play another track from this. Um, you'll see that the interest basically is to create um, a sense of narrative. A short narrative with um, understanding that sometimes there is um, a very short span of uh, span of time uh, to listen to something, um, and sometimes field recordings require extensive listening experiences. But sometimes, because of the um, nature of what you are trying to achieve, it requires another cert another speed, like narratively. Keep in mind that first track was was um, one single take. Uh, this second one is edited, and it's called um, uh, Puente la Reina, which is a town like four days ahead from the first recording, four or five days ahead. Mm. And my idea with this track was to try to describe uh, the town itself where you stop to sleep, which is Puente la Reina. Um, what I did it was mixing, um, I think it's three kinds of different recordings done in the same village. The first recording refers to a church that uh, because the village is built along the way of St. James so um, I tried to make the recording narratively as if you were crossing the town so the the recording starts the composition starts on a church that it's uh, sitting on the entrance of the village it goes across the town through their main street which is uh, the St. James way and it ends crossing um, a bridge that crosses um, I think it's Arga River. I'm not sure about that. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong. So the idea compositionally was just to... Mm, it was designed as a um, geographical feature. Um, the composition is not based on narration, but based on geography, maybe? I don't know. So that was the main idea with that piece. And if you feel like it, we can go uh, listen to it. I th see that this is like pretty damn loud. I'm going to put it that down. Okay, let's go.
Yeah, that was Puente de la Reina. You can find all these recordings um, on uh, my Bandcamp page um, and listen to it at, at any point. Uh, they are open and free to download also. Um, I think I'm going to stick for a little while more, while more on, this, on this album. I have to warn you about something before we continue. I just realized, and this is going to some, be something that Chaumens and Animatech, they're going to love it so much. Because there is like a massive thunderstorm happening or starting to happen here. So my field recording special show might, might end up abruptly or not. We'll see. Or maybe I'm going to finish just opening the window and just <laughs> listening to what's happening outside from my apartment. Um, but this is something that's going to happen, most likely. We'll see. In any case, um, this this uh, I, I started with um, Camino Parte Primera um, because I think it, it encompasses many of the things I, I was interested at some point. And that thing about the brevity, it's important, um, for me at least, um, because it allows me to... Um, to use it as, as some sort of, of uh, trial trailer thing or um, a smooth version of of what it's supposed to be a field recording um, of course I do massive uh, long takes uh, 20 40 50 minutes I'm not Marcus uh, Berenson from from Iceland who does like amazing stuff but but I like brevity because I in this world we're living on it allows me for for fast um, edits and and I think you can achieve um a pretty interesting level of of uh, deep listening if you for instance listen to this album um all the way through which it's it's how it's been designed and this is something you can also discuss and we can discuss because albums are are something to be disappeared i don't know if you hear the thunders jesus christ that's gonna be fun but anyway i'm gonna jump into the last um piece of uh, of this album Camino Parte Primera one of the interesting I mean the rest of the album goes like that I mean it, it's just really short compositions really short takes um, really mm, mixed down stuff um, but this last piece it's gonna be it's it's the longest in fact of the album because it's um, it requires that and you will see why um, and this is a recording I stumbled upon when we arrived to Logroño, the last step of our journey. Uh, Chao Mendes is asking on the chat what will be the average duration of your recordings. That's something tricky. I, d I really don't know. Uh, some biologist says that you have to go to the place, record, and leave the recorder working for, I don't know, 50 minutes until nature comes back to its normal pace when you are gone. And then you end up with recordings of one hour, two hours. I think my average... Uh, length will be between 5 and 10 minutes having files of 25 to 40 minutes not longer and files from 2 1 minute I don't do any more like 1 minute take it's super difficult I do like I have files that short if it if I'm doing some kind of folly thing or um or just need to record one specific sound for one purpose or it's a kind of musical thing, or I'm gonna loop that sound for a really fast composition thing. But I think that, that the right timing is between five and 10 minutes in my case. Some people might think it's too short, uh, but it does work for me maybe, and I don't know. What I'm doing lately mostly is doing a lot, a lot of absence recordings, just getting one cheap recorder, putting on a tree, go away and see what happens there get back to it after 30 45 minutes i have i found it really hard to be uh, super engaged with that um more than this time m more than than 40 minutes because then I, I really don't know what to do with it um and i don't know uh, until what point it's super interesting to have super massive sound files for installations and stuff like that it's interesting and and to make like yeah deep listening exercises but for, for finished composition stuff like that I don't know if it's it's uh, that necessary. Um, so getting back to the um, to the album to to Camino Parte Primera here was super super fast pacing. In fact, it was super easy to edit the album because as I was walking, I could be 
chopping and uh, mentally and saying yeah i remember that recording from that town i'm gonna mix it with this one da, 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 da. because each track refers to in a specific location on the way um and it made it super easy i did the album in a couple of days after getting back from el camino so that made it super easy when you have super long takes you tend to do more music maybe or you can get even more lost in it Let's listen to the final track because for the whole album you have been listening to field recordings like pure field recordings with some humans interactions so birds natural spaces a lot of easter music um and traditions and celebrations along the way because of course this is a religious uh, pilgrimage so doing it in easter it had it had a lot of things happening there in the human level but by the end of it i i got an album that was pretty much kind of nature-ish like uh, middle <laughs> middle ages field recordings uh, no cars whatsoever almost um and and this kind of uh, bucolic or romantic um i don't know uh scenario but by the end we got to the cathedral in logroño i turned on the um, the recording uh the recorder right there and this is what happened
So, while the um, um, organ of the Logroño Cathedral was was playing a, in Alboraya back in 2020, in my studio is already raining. I don't know if you listen to this, but uh, the rooftop of my studio, um, it's like pretty thin. It's like this thick. So when it rains, um, it's almost impossible to listen to something. Um, if I shut up, Maybe you can hear the thunderstorm. <laughs> can you hear it? This is like live field recordings. Can put it. I can put it even up. So, I think I'm gonna play you another file. I um, think I'm gonna prepare some files and I'll come back to you. Because you won't hear me at all at some point. So, give me five minutes.
I think thanks to the noise gate from OBS, you might be able to hear me properly. The thing is that I'm, I don't listen to myself anymore. I can't. The, um, the noise here is like pretty loud. This seems like prepared, but it's not at all. It's like super rainy right now. Eh, Animatec, se, Jaume, se oye bien. Se puede escuchar, ¿verdad? So, okay. I don't hear anything, absolutely nothing. <laughs> but but let's thank the noise gate from OBS, which is pretty awesome. And, and it's just canceling all the crazy noises uh, I'm listening right now because there is an unprogrammed and unscheduled uh, thunderstorm happening in Valencia. I might even be uh, talking too loud, probably. Um, I'm gonna make this kind of exercise. So I want to get back to the recording I did in Logroño because one of the things I love to do with um, with field recordings is that I kind of reuse them constantly. Uh, and, and this was recorded in 2014, if I, I, I recall right. And just last year, I recovered some of these organ sounds from this cathedral, from Logroño, from that specific recording. And, and, and I ended up doing um, a music track from my latest album, Still Life. I said I wouldn't play, um, I wouldn't um, defer from the field recordings um, territory, but I just feel like doing this. So indulge me. Uh, what we are going to listen is a, a song called uh, The Sweet Hereafter, and it was comp composed uh, last year using exclusively samples from from that uh, organ, from that recording, from this specific album. What you have been listening on the, um, on the previous, previous track, uh, Before the Storm, it was, um, it was like uh, one single take, it just happened like that. The guy kept uh, rehearsing the piece on the organ, but that's all I've got. But sampling it, sampling all these uh, organ sounds, I came out with this composition I'm gonna play you right now. And I'm gonna get back, uh, hopefully when we get back, at least me, uh, I'm gonna be able to listen to myself. Uh, because it seems like the rain is maybe pouring down a little bit. I don't know, Marcos Peralta, you are in, also in Valencia, I guess you, you are saying that it's already raining there, so hopefully it passed by. Uh, ah, and Marcos also is asking about what kind of microphone uh, I use. For the recordings uh, you have been listening before, the thunderstorm recording and the organ thing. I think I did everything with the Zoom H2, uh, not even with the lavalier microphones, the Primo ECM uh, electrode capsules. I, I most likely done it with uh, the basic Zoom H2 before even uh, Zoom H2N existed. So I think it's pretty okay for the kind of work. I, I wouldn't be using it that anymore. But um, it's definitely uh, an amazing piece of of equipment that you can use pretty easily. Now I'm all, all also using only using almost the um, Primo ECM uh, 172. If I'm not wrong, I can send you the link. So yeah, let's go and listen to this piece that I did using only samples from from the organ church in in Logroño back in 2014. And this is recording is from this last year from from my latest album. Uh, in this track, it's also featured uh, Isabel La Torre, a uh, pretty good friend and collaborator. She plays accordion and voice, if you if you can find it. Um, this is not anymore field recordings, or maybe it is. Uh, I'm not sure about that. But the thing is that after many years of using these organ sounds, um, I find I found some sort of purpose to it beyond being uh, the end track for the Camino Parte de Primera uh, album. So yeah, let's listen to the suite here after from my latest album and yeah, let's go.
Hello, Chris Pintol. Thank you for your kind words and greetings from Chile. Un abrazo desde, desde Valencia, en el este español. Um, so, to continue with my current weather report, um, my status is that uh, it seems like the thunderstorm happening over my studio is already heading east, so that's good. Um, I know Marcos Peralta, who is in the chat, he's western from me, so if if there is another thunderstorm coming in, because here in Valencia, thunderstorms come from the west and go through the east. So Marcos, if you start, if it starts raining again in your place, please just send a, <laughs> send a message on the chat and I'm going to play a pretty long file or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's still raining here, Marcos, but but not that much. It stopped for a while, so I can continue. Um, and that gave me, I mean, the idea of uh, of playing you another track um, related. Well, just to sum up about the previous one, what you have just been listening is what um, it's the outcome of processing and sampling um, the previous track we listened. It. it was a recording from an organ church in in Logroño. And this piece that you already listened to is, is like a composed version and sampled version of that organ. Um, rearranged, recomposed, uh, full of um, signal processing and effects. And also with the addition of, of, the, um, of Isabel La Torre, um, that in this, in this specific piece is playing accordion and, and singing. Um, so that's that's something that for me is really important because it's it's sometimes um, the way uh, recordings um, find their purpose at some point. Uh, sometimes you find yourself, I guess you guys, uh, if you also do feel recordings, you find yourself recording stuff that you really don't know what you're going to do with it and they don't have any purpose and they maybe they are sitting in a, in a, in a folder lost in your archive for many years until you find them uh, another use. In the case of this organ church recording, I, I, I since I recorded, I was like, oh Jesus, I have to do something with that. Uh, aside from uh, the purpose I gave it on that specific moment, being part of that album. And finally, after what uh, six years later, um, I found the way to use it uh, as a sampled instrument, which is something I do rather um, ra rather often. And this is something that for me it's important because uh, it brings me to to the next file I'm gonna play. Some of you that might know me um, might know already that what I'm gonna show you or or already listened to that specific recording because it's been I I've been using it quite a lot and I'm just browsing it right now because I I, I thought that it would be nice to to listen to it. So uh, uh, let me see where is that. I think is let me see or maybe I can play it ah no I can play it from from the from the album Almost there. One second.
Okay, found. Um, that's what means browsing through your archive. Um, the file I'm gonna play you is Senia. Um, it's a recording that for me is very important because it marks the moment in which I started to question myself um, um, the instrumental aspect or the gestual uh, performative um, aspect of field recordings because I found I found on on my village um, on my village I did find um, um, an iron wheel uh, that was used to take water from from um, from underground uh, wells I don't know if it's correct in English um, and this uh, wheel is like completely rusted and and full of uh, leaves and stuff like that and when you turn it it does a really amazing sound um, and also uh, the sound of this wheel it, it it's affected by humidity I guess or the ambience of the place because it's completely in the middle of the uh, in the middle of a, of the countryside, so it's completely abandoned, and it's pretty pretty amazing, pretty amazing thing um, that when you play it as an instrument, it it does an amazing sound. And we are gonna listen the first time I recorded it. I f I discovered this 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 wheel um, many years ago. I I just saw that it, it it made that sound. I came back home. I got my gear. I went back there and I recorded one single piece that I end up using it uh, many 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 times in in different in different contexts. I'm going to play you uh, an excerpt, not the whole piece because it's pretty glitchy and crazy. Uh but and then maybe I can talk about a little bit more about it. But for me this this recording it marks um a shift in my way of understanding um how I could use my field recordings, how I could make music with it um and and how i end up doing things like the track we just listened listen it by the time i was recording this kind of uh the file you're gonna listen i was more into hardcore field recording things i'm not anymore i'm pretty much more open to almost anything at this point so yeah let's listen to this and then maybe we can chat a little bit um i know there are some questions uh, in the chat sorry guys because you also have to know that uh, i'm using mac so mac is shit for streaming um and i have like a 30 second delay between you guys and what i'm saying so sorry if i'm being a little bit uh, slow answering ah well you're ju just the chilean people t chatting about stuff <laughs> que tal chicos buenas okay so let's listen senior the uh, senior is the, the catalan word for this um this kind of wheel and um, that's its sound.
Well, that was um, a fragment, uh, just uh, a short um, version of it. Um, the thing about this, this it depends on how you how you spin it on the speed you spin it, and if you if you grab it um, and try to move it as as slow as possible, you get like these really low ends. That sound for me, it sounds like um, feedback. It does to you guys, just resonate as like a feedback thing. Um, and that's super handy to do different stuff. I did also recording um, on that very specific location with uh, with Sara Galan, the cellist, and she was playing cello, um, and we did kind of improvisation. The video is somewhere around. I can find you on the next on the next uh, listening. I can find you the link, and it's pretty interesting because she also was playing with with trying to imitate the sonorities. It's be, it's pretty much difficult to to know how it's going to respond the wheel and for instance i went back i did i did that recording on pure summer um and it sounded like that then i came back on winter like in christmas something like that and then it didn't sound at all so i'm guessing that humidity and heat uh, is good for the instrument um um oh yeah and, and i would and about that it's it's um if you follow the well you you cannot listen to the whole but i can send you the link as well um if you spin it fast and fast and fast the sound is much more it's highly pitched and it has some sort of cycling um output or something like that it sounds it really does change from from the bending and if you stop suddenly the the wheel spinning and you break the inertia and you turn the other way around it's it's also doing uh, pretty st strange stuff uh i just want to say um hello to terje Paul paulsen i'm guessing the trgpl as in our friend from norway you should do we should do a program with you this guy has amazing albums um uh, doing and uh, he's doing amazing things with field recordings from norway uh, follow him um and and yeah and um, blue jim is also asking on the chat if uh, the recording is it's just the plain recording yes it is it's just one single take um no editing whatsoever i did afterwards um a highly processed version of this um of this instrument and i made another piece on my album from 2015 i think uh no 2013 uh, it's called a country falling apart you can find it also on my bandcamp page but this this is like the raw material that i have used it if you i, I guess if you guys have, have already figured it out but if you pitch down uh pull stretch it uh, you can do amazing stuff um i did a whole album on that and i'm still using it for instance i'm uh, i've been using this file for for free improvisation um and it's it's something really useful because it's 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 something that is not an instrument it's definitely not an instrument in the first place but it can become an, a one and that's something really interesting because if this the recording itself it's it's an instrument that you can rearrange and play live with it um there are, there are a lot of things happening there and i have any problems using it over and over again because as far as we are concerned musicians are like um playing um, ace constantly so i can play um this sound file anytime i feel like it so um, there is no problem on on repurposing reusing it this idea of um of um found instruments it brings me to another piece i'm gonna play to you that's a finish it one but it's um it's composed but um it's based on fields rec on field recordings and it's from this album i was referencing uh right before a uh, country falling apart the that piece it follows a little bit the the trend i more or less explored uh, by that time um and it's called u-turn the the piece i'm gonna play you it's 100 percent field recordings and there is really few processing what basically this composition is it's um an overlapping of of the same soundtrack uh, or the same soundscape in this case the soundscape um it's um, um a square nearby where marcos peralta lives by the way 
um, in Valencia uh, where the tram makes a U-turn. It, it, the, the line just uh, goes until the end of an avenue, makes a turn and gets back uh, the other way. And these trams, um, they are pretty shitty ones. They were built during the, uh, right before the um, global crisis and they were, I mean, I guess they costed some money, but then local politicians just <laughs> get some money extra. So they bought the cheaper ones and told us they were expensive, but they are pretty shitty trams. So the tracks are super rusty. The engines are crap. Um, and every night when this, the last tram uh, makes that U-turn, it makes a crazy noise. Um, for me, it sounds like an electric guitar again. I don't know why. Um, so I decided to to finish this this piece, which is eight minutes long, but I, I think I'm not gonna play it, the whole thing. Um, but basically, it just it just um, recordings from that U-turn from close by, a, a little bit far away. Those I recorded with the Rode NT5. I'm I'm I think I'm sure about that. And basically, it's just a kind of intuitive composition around a very industrial raw material, which is this crazy sound of the of the engines and uh, train tracks of the um, of the tramway in Valencia so yeah let's let's listen to this
yeah so that was it um before i jump into that i just want to make a new uh, weather report um the storm seems heading east so we are safe for now if i look to the west uh, from my uh, studio i can see the light of the day so that means that uh, we are safe for now so maybe this um broadcast doesn't end abruptly <laughs> so <laughs> that's good for me because my heart was a little bit pounding when i saw that black blackest black cloud coming uh, right at me but yeah now we are fine um obs is working like a charm cpu is more or less fine uh so let's keep going um yeah, uh, Blue Jim was asking about the microphones and the panning on this track and, and this specific track. Um, the, it's not different microphones. I'm uh, using um, uh, an ORTF position, which is using two omnidirectional microphones in a position like that. Something like that. It has to be like uh, 120 degrees between them. Uh, and I think it's around 40 centimeters, something between between uh, both capsules uh, what I was doing is um, I made recordings in the middle of the square where where the um, where this uh, tram makes the u-turn uh, and I also did like super close-ups from from the tracks because uh, this is like a kind of a pedestrian way so you can get really really close to them um, to the tram to make the recording it gets a little bit dangerous because uh, you have to be super close and it's a bit, little bit scary but because it's just running on the tarmac but you can put the microphones like i don't know 40 centimeters far away from all the engines so there there's when you can get like super detailed sounds of this kind of a squeaky um sound objects from the from the tracks and and the joints between the different uh, carts and so on but the whole thing is done in, in ORTF, which is a technique I'm, I, it's one of my favorite um, microphone position for, for almost anything because it, it provides like a super wide stereo image. It's not binaural um, because binaural uh, means another thing. But for me, it's, it's one of my favorite like stereo imaging um, positions because it's super cheap to do and and the outcome is like a massively open stereo it does something um in the middle parts of the recording like the thing that it should be here on the recording and it sometimes it, it heavily pans stuff it doesn't make the 300 and the 360 degrees thing um that binaural does on headphones but it does the trick to to get a super wide and for for i don't know for recordings mm, um for more conventional soundscapey recordings it's for me it's super useful because it just separates and gives you a, a really wide stereo image of, of what's happening uh if you want to listen to more detailed stuff on that end we can we can just listen no, i have no problem i'm going to show you now another recording from that very album uh, since i'm i'm there um, um we just listened to this piece called u-turn from my album um, a country falling apart now we're gonna listen to boido uh it's a piece also kind of in the in the mood of of uh, this idea of the found instrument for me the tramways and this u-turn it's a it's an instrument in itself um so i understand it as 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 what it is and and it's it, it allows for a pretty much interesting um site specific um composition stuff like that in this case um the recording was done in boido in a really tiny village in the western side of of asturias a northern region on the west of spain on the yeah west of spain uh, and i did it with a um, sound artist juanjo palacios who may, some of you might know him um this is a rearranged version of what we did there and this small town had a church the church collapsed at some point and they just put the bell of the church in a place there so you can go and touch it and do crazy things as as we did so yeah let's listen to this and hope you like it <laughs> Thank you. 
it's funny because that last um, bit of sound that kind of the door uh, closing is something i've used in many 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 different co uh, concerts and pieces and stuff i mean I, I use that many many times which is fine i mean there is no problem sometimes you guys ask around uh, it's like what what do you do with it uh, how how um is is there the point of of using twice the same recording yes of course you just use it it's like when you play an a um just play it as many times as you want it if if it does the trick if it does what what you feel like uh, what it needs to do uh use it and this door uh, recorded in in asturias many many years ago it's been with me for a while uh in this one um I said at the beginning that I would be like super hardcore field recordings, but I'm just jumping into my albums. This one is not really processed. It might be some sort of low frequencies, like all the resonance of the of the bell. It's a pretty big bell um, that has been processed and maybe pulse stretched, but not that much. Mostly it's over overlapping um, recordings on top of each other and and seeing what happens uh, between them and also the, all the all the noises around and and the kind of like this kind of sonic universe uh, on the backside on the backdrop um it's it's also the outcome of of overlapping uh, a few different recordings which is something i do very often it does bring them to life somehow and and when you're using like more digitalized or um sound sources like synthesizer or whatever and you paste them on top of this kind of recordings of distant uh, squeaky sounds and stuff like that um it can so it kind of brings things alive somehow i don't know if you heard it at the beginning but in the piece uh, where i was playing on the track with uh, isabel la torre um, there is a like a layer underneath everything which is uh, a, a silent recording from a from a church uh and this i don't know for me it's it's it, I, th I guess it it worldizes like this you know i don't know if you know this term um which is the act of putting um a recording playing back in a place and recording that sound on that place that's worldizing a sound file i guess you'd know that i don't know anyway um getting back to to my false promise of not of being super feel hardcore feel recordings show um i'm gonna try to <laughs> commit a little bit to that and i'm gonna play you a file that um i don't know if it resonates on the previous ones but um it it again talks about the idea of finding um some sort of musicality in 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 natural context this particular file it's uh, from a project i did in in euskadi in the north part of spain uh it was a project about coastal sounds uh, and this one I found it um, on a recording session one morning in Pasaya, which is a small village next to San Sebastián, to Donosti. And what you're going to listen is uh, my tiny microphones, uh, the Primo ECM 17472 uh, microphones uh, put inside of um, a, ca a rock that has many, many different uh, holes and cavities and 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 it's like eroded by water so what you're listening is how the um, the sea waves are hitting to this rock and and sounding through that that piece of um of rock sitting in the in the harbor of uh, basaya um what i find interesting about this file is that if you kind of sample it uh, you've sampled the kind of songs you're going to listen um you can get stuff like uh, from a granular synthesizer or something like that so it's pretty it's it's an amazing sound that you can only find probably in nature you can try to recreate it and will be fine to do that to make a a modular synth that does what this rock in pasaya does uh, when the tie is at certain level and it's interesting because for me it's um it's an interesting sound because it's a sound about um that nature does not consciously or obviously because it's just water hitting a rock but it's like human intervention because that rock was put there by man because it's part of the the coastal protection of the town etc etc but at the same time then the water and 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 the air because air is pretty important in this recording um does the rest and it does it does make a kind of music by itself 
um i'm gonna play it and if you like it then we can comment um please say something you're super quiet <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
One of the cool things about this this kind of recording is that um, you don't know you're gonna find it. They are just somewhere there, and sometimes you don't have even the ability to put the year there. Uh, and it happens because um, you have also the freedom of uh, using your microphones in another way. Um, the good thing about these small capsules I'm using, uh, I think I, I have some of them. I might show you is that they are inexpensive and this means that uh, you can place them inside of things or you can throw them as if it were like um fishing uh, as, as if you were a fishing and you can put them inside stuff and see what happens there um this recording it's the outcome of doing this uh, i pass by like uh, sun fishing exactly that's it that's it that's sun fishing um but it, ha it it if you don't put your head in there you you don't find it so sometimes it's about to hmm let's see what happens if we do that and in that project i did a lot of those recordings one of the things that happened on 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 that project in particular is that i i start i was doing like coastal field recordings from from this area from spain from from euskadi and the first days i was recording the typical stuff um if we get back to the beginning of the broadcast I was recording sound ambiences in the streets. I was recording the church bells, people, chatter, walking, cars, blah, blah, blah. But after a while, um, when I did all of that in all the villages I was working on, um, I just, then it, it all started to shift because you stop looking for the common places you might want to um, go with your microphone, which will be the obvious. It's, it's like when you buy a, a digital camera the first you want to do is to go on an afternoon and make a, a sunset picture or something like that <laughs> or a postcard uh, and after a while you start working with it and you start to find new stuff i think this kind of recording or at least the ones i'm listening in, it it falls in another category because it, it's not it's not something you are seeking uh, it, it finds you somehow or you find it uh, somewhere uh, and that's that's something remarkable but because this kind of sounds they only tend to appear when you are deeply immersed on the process of, of field recording if you are just working on a level surface you go for the church you go for the birds you go for the um, the common the common that that common place where field recordings go usually which is fine it's perfectly fine i have no problem on that but next level is it's it's going after something um unusual new um complex in itself i think this recording it might sound i think it's nine ten minutes long um and i think it just works by itself I, it and by the way it doesn't have any purpose it's this kind of recording is sitting on my on my archive and i i haven't found a use to it so maybe in the future it's the first time it's here live probably uh, aside from myself of course but i think it, it's never been listened because i didn't even use it on the final project i did on on the base country about that i'm gonna put you another file from that project and that was recorded um how i organize my files oh yeah animatech is asking me how do i organize my files that's something funny because i i i order by um geographically 
that's my my this is super important and and if you guys you do and you start to to um, to store and and archive your your sound recordings you obviously have to name them because if you don't do that um go through them it's super difficult on pictures is fine you just see the picture but you cannot um after a while you don't, i have plenty of recordings i i they were named at the point where they were made and i just don't know what did what what's in there i just i listen to it and it's like oh this is cool but i, I really don't know um so i use locations yeah exactly what i use is um the first word of the um, name file it's usually the place where i record it because i my memory works in this way i remember places and locations i just didn't entrar la materia uh that's the first i have like uh let me see one two three i have four kind of um, concepts on the names of the files the first one is always the location in this case for instance this recording is called uh, it's called uh, pasaya then uh, underscore pasaya is the name of the place where i did recording the second name um, it refers to the main thing happening on the recording in this case is waves i put olas in spanish and then I, I add a second, a third, a third um, name uh, that refers to a particular element. Because if I say Pasaya Olas only, I have many recordings of waves in Pasaya. So I need to, um, to differentiate from the other waves recording. And this in particular, what is interesting about the waves itself is that it happens inside, a, I just said Cueva, like a cave. So this recording is called Pasaya underscore location um olas waves underscore cueva underscore and then i have two recordings of that very place so one has zero uh, underscore zero one and the other one has underscore zero two and that's basically the way i i don't need more tags to exactly animatech <laughs> paella olas cueva <laughs> That's the way. But paella doesn't refer to a place. I need location specific. So you have to put Alboraya or whatever. In any case, um, the thing is that uh, it, that's how I ordered the files. And then all of them, they are stored in, in folders, in bigger folders that refer to the region, most likely. In this case, for instance, this recording is inside a folder called Euskadi. And inside Euskadi, there is Gipuzkoa, which is the province where, where I did these recordings. And inside this Gipuzkoa province, there is all these recordings from that time. That's my way of doing. Um, then I have another, another system for ordering, which is the system I use for recordings that they, they, are on, uh, they are not in any location particular, or they are recorded, for instance, in my studio, or the, the location is not even important because uh, it has no um, resonance on the space for instance if i do a recording session with musicians in in a city i don't i don't title it like that i have a folder a specific folder i call it instruments and then i store it by the name of the instrument or the kind of music i recorded or this kind of stuff but 99 percent of my recordings which are field recordings from from uh, outside they are named um, always by location it just helps me and then the second word it refers to the main thing happening on that recording the third thing it just uh, narrows down um the search for instance and the fourth thing it's just a number if there are like a couple or three recordings of more or less the same thing and this is something i do right after recording um if, if i spend the whole day recording the first thing i do when i, I get to the place where i'm staying or at home it's immediately after put my headphones and remember everything i've recorded during the day um because if i don't do it in that moment then it's gonna be fucking crazy sorry to find out um what is what especially when you spend like a whole day recording and you have i don't know 40 or 50 um sound files to browse to um and that's the way i do it i have no more clues the next file we're gonna listen from that very same project it's called lake atio the name of the town and this one is called bubbles only um <laughs> so <laughs> you already know what's gonna be so yeah let's listen to it to it and and we're gonna be get back to it if you if you feel like it Let's <laughs> go. 
Well, that was um, I'm just halfway through this this file. Um, uh, uh, Chaumens was asking about uh, the when, so uh, if it was important the when on the recordings, and it does. But um, I only use it when um, recording um, stuff that requires it, like uh, cultural stuff or human things, or for instance the 15m movement recordings uh, it's important to store them um uh, and and put the date when it happens or sometimes for instance i was i've been recording stuff in in some uh, feasts in uh, in the south of valencia in in alcoy in moros y cristians where i it's this kind of tradition that every year happens and i have recording from two different years uh i i tend to do that or when i'm recording something that it it's um it just wanna ha it's just gonna happen once for instance the field recordings from covid-19 did in march and april they are also tagged with the year because obviously um an important aspect of those of those recordings is when they were taken but generally speaking I, i'm not doing that because i'm um um i should do it more probably uh, because it's important to get back to it um i guess that if i go to the metadata of the of the sound files at least i can get the year which is more or less important um probably the season is also important but i don't i'm don't consider myself in the need of um of tracing the seasons and the kind of like yeah i'm listening to this kind of birds sorry about the biologists and all these people super interested in ultra uh, precise and scientific uh, nature recordings but I don't care that much about that so it's not important for me it's winter or summer you can more or less guess it I guess depending on the recordings but but it's not an issue um, at this point for me uh, I just do it when it's extremely necessary to put the date because it it has a, a, an important resonance but getting back to the previous recording one of the funny things or the interesting things about um this kind of uh, sound file is that um you can get really close to to what's happening or you can get really dragged into uh, a specific world in that specific recording this bubble recording the microphones were placed on top of a, a half sunk sunk um boat in a, in the harbor i kind of crawled in left the microphones as close as possible to the water eventually they got wet 
and I had to change the capsules. But it it's a for me it's a it's an interesting recording because it it shows how close you can get to things when you don't care about <laughs> your gear that much. Um, of course, I wouldn't do that with DPAs or microphones that cost you I don't know a thousand euros uh, or Neumanns or stuff like that. You do it with this kind of microphones, and this allows you to getting into crazy places and do stupid things. The next recording I'm gonna play it's a, it's in fact a composition. So we are getting back to the old days when I was doing pure field recording composition. It's um, a recording I call it Bora Irta, and, and it's a bunch of different recordings done in uh, Serra de Irta, which is a natural reserve in the north of uh, Valencia region. And the recording starts with, um, well, the piece starts with a recording of um, a kind of really tiny pipe we found on the countryside. Maybe it's like, I don't know, that thick, something like that, and it's just standing on the ground. So I just throw a rock inside of that and, and you will see what happens in the recording. Afterwards, the composition shifts to different places I was on that um, very particular place and it ends up um, playing in, in a beach uh, made of rocks. Uh, and I'm playing around a little bit with some found objects over there. So it's a combination of three different things. The, the, the strange sound I discovered by throwing a small stone into a pipe in the middle of the countryside, a uh, soundscape from um, a little church lost in a, a town called Benlloc, and then it shifts towards these coastal sounds again, uh, trying to connect with the um, with the base country uh, field recordings, and it ends up playing again with this idea of detailed field recordings, because also when you when you get close to the sound source, you kind of make a um, you create a um, f uh, depth field, no field depth, like in photography, where you have something on on the um, front end and something on the backdrop. Uh, like in this recording, you could hear the bubble super close by, but if you pay attention on what's happening, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven meters far from that bubbly thing, uh, there is like a ton of layers of information. It's like it's not just uh, um, a fully recording of bubbles, but it it's in a place and has a lot of sound. And this recording in particular, the, this composition I'm going to play to you, uh, halfway through, it explores that idea of pretty close by sounds happening almost in the air and pretty far out uh, sounds. Exactly. Profundidad de campo in Spanish. Uh, feel depth, I think it's in English. Thank you. So let's listen to this Bora Irta. By the way, this recording and and most of my well, most of what we are listening it's on my Bandcamp page, and you can just browse in and and listen to anything you you feel like it. Let's go. Thank you. 
yeah that was it um and yeah here was like that was the idea um to work with um detailed sounds combined with um some other sounds on the backdrop uh combine them it's something i have i have stopped doing for a while but i should i should get back to it at some point because it was really it's it's great fun it's it's like a character study of a of a specific place um and i just realized that i didn't care that much about the handling noises from the recorder this last bit it was done on top of a kind of um, dune made of rock so every time you try to move uh, since all the rocks were in contact with the tripod where i had the recorder everything was getting into the recorder which is sometimes you found it as a problem for you when you record around but sometimes it can be just useful to create this kind of a squeaky strange atmosphere in which like rock connects to rock to, to to another rock and then it goes to your tripod and then you you can start doing things like one meter far away from the recorder and and the machine does get that um i don't know there is there is a, a lot of fun on that um and i i used to do that quite a lot um i i just re i was i just realized that i i haven't played any uh sounds uh, from from contact microphones and stuff like that uh the next file i'm gonna play to you it's another study like short composition similar to this one in another completely different location um this one it i record everything in a i don't know in a 20 meter uh area in a river um, uh, next to my parents place in catalonia el uh, rio gaya um uh, we were just there for an afternoon just just um, uh, having i don't know spending the summer and trying to refresh yourself so i just started to record at some point um uh, attaching contact microphones into dry uh, plants and branches and stuff like that and i just combined that with with um, found sounds in in the location with more or less the same idea just to gather some sound sources then i got back home combined them in in some sort of narrative of, um, structure which i don't really remember what was my thought behind that but it falls into the category of these previous recordings we have been listening recordings done during a small period of time then just chopped and and mixed together uh, pretty much intuitively with no not much more pur purpose than just having fun with it um let's see how it sounds because i haven't heard that for many years so I'm I'm sh I'm not sure about how this is gonna sound. Um, okay.
Yeah, that was it. The I think I said it wrong. The last part of the recording was using um, contact mics and and not like aerial microphones. And I pretty much remember that those were like super dry um, pieces of grass where I did attach like pretty tiny contact microphones with with some clips. And I was just playing with the tip of my finger, like just moving the branches. Um, it's so much fun. The problem with with contact mics, I always find, is that um, again, since it, there is what you're gonna listen, you never heard it before. It's it's super difficult to to fish for those sounds. And sometimes you get the intuition that if I touch the contact mic on on that specific place, it's gonna sound interesting. Sometimes it does not. Sometimes it's super dry. And sometimes if you have shitty contact microphones like uh, these ones, because those were like 20 cents piezoelectric microphones, um, um, it tends to have this kind of really raw, dry sound, uh, which sometimes is nice, but sometimes it's all, it also falls into a kind of uh, common ground or common place. Um, for my next recording, I'm going to need a couple of minutes, so I'm going to leave you and get back to you because we are heading already to the end of this broadcast uh, i think i'm gonna we're gonna listen a few more files and and in half an hour or something we're gonna finish so uh, give me just a couple of minutes to organize uh, the end of it and i'll see you in a while
Cool. Yeah. So here we are back. So following, I think I'm I'm gonna um, explore those recordings because I haven't heard them for a while. And if you are okay with it, I'm gonna play a few more of them, and then we'll go and continue with our own lives or whatever like that. <laughs> So this one, it's also in the trend of the previous recordings and this one is another study of a location and uh, in this case it's a super dry version um, compared to the other one, it has like kind of forest um, the forest, the river, blah 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 this is on a, on an abandoned uh, train station in, in Cuenca which is one of these regions in the center part of Spain that are pretty much um, uh, without population I was recording there um, right after arriving in Spain after many years so that was must be um, the recording must be from 2010 something like that you see when you don't put the when on the things um, you get it late and this recording it's recorded on a station and it's super highly composed it's still super short version but it, it encompasses all these ideas about about uh, combining different combining different layers of sound and and no processing at all, which is for me it's it's something important. Let's listen to it. Those with um, the keen ear um, maybe have realized the shitty quality of that recording. Uh, now that I'm listening to it, it, it just sounds super bad and it was done with an H2. Sometimes the Zoom H2 can do amazing things, sometimes it does sound super shitty. These last leaves on the back end, they, it, they, they didn't sound really well at all. Probably it's because these files are um, have been like compressed and decompressed from mp3 to WAP uh, a thousand of times, I'm not sure. The first recording, the one that, o that opens the piece, the one with, um, with the car passing by, 
that is really good i think this one that panning is is really great even it's the that's more or less cool but the rest of it it's just shit <laughs> i don't like it anymore uh i i can feel like the 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 bad quality of the of the microphones when i'm trying to do what in later compositions uh, the other ones we have listened previously to this one it's like pretty much late in the um uh, pretty late on the process so so i i get i guess i got a little bit better with with the years um and also compositionally it sounds like i, I was just chopping like the m the most interesting beats one behind the other it sounds like a, a sample uh, pack from from yeah this is my sound library if you want to browse it it sounds like that so it's good because then i just played something that i really fucking hate <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to that anymore <laughs> i'm gonna erase it um i'm gonna end up with playing three tracks um from um, a year, uh, an album I did a couple of years ago, um, because I think they encompass, or they, I don't know, they summarize things I've said here, which I mm, probably will regret in the future. But I think they, they call back to, to, um, to all this process of shifting from field recordings to more composed pieces to more kind of uh, ambient uh, music, whatever. Um, the three pieces are from my album called Aquí llega el invierno, uh, Here Comes the Winter. And it was recorded in a remote area in Spain, um, in uh, Guadalaviar, which is a really tiny town, pretty high up. And I did those recordings um, right after a crazy snowstorm that uh, happened there when I got there because I was doing a project in there. So I almost don't get to the town because the road was close behind me and I was just driving uh, with the um, snowplow in front of me. I got stuck on the village like for four days until the roads open again. And during that time, I recorded an album that kind of um, uh, explores some of the features of the town because it's one of the last towns in Spain where um, um, there is like um, the um, uh, shepherds uh, do long ways to to um, feed the animal they walk like for three months to another region completely different and they come back in winter to to have the cattle um, close by so i'm gonna play uh, a track it's called todos quietos um which um, it, it's a track that tries to um illustrate sonically this moment when the the snowstorm stopped and there's kind of quiet environment which there is like some droplets um but the um, the tau hasn't started yet um and it's this time where everything is like stands still and and that track is it's called like that in spanish todos quietos it's ev everybody's mm, don't move something like that and it has musical elements because i recorded a small kalimba on location and it's combined with field recordings of this static situation in the soundscape and yeah well it sounds like that
Yeah. Well, that was it. Um, that was the idea with the piece because it happened that th thunderstorm and and then it was like super quiet. Um, and that was kind of the mood in the town because then afterwards uh, it all started to sounding back again when the sunrise, the water started to well, the ice and the snow started to melt. It it really did change the sound. It, it went from super tiny and subtle to a more like vivid soundscape of droplets falling from from every bit of uh, architecture in the town, and and that was just right before this kind of sunrise uh, sh shifting situation. Um, then um, the other track we're gonna listen uh, it's called "Des Yellow," but before uh, getting into that. Um, I want to ask you guys if, if you really like that uh, content. We're going to play a couple more files and then uh, I'm going to close this broadcast. Um, and I, I just want to know if, if you like this kind of con uh, this kind of content. If we, I think we're going to do it more, uh, maybe more prepared. Uh, it will be great to have um, um, guests around to hold for almost three hours. This show by myself is pretty exhausting. That's something I know now, not before. So I guess if, if there is like more, um, if, if I invite uh, people in to do exactly what we did, uh, commenting it, um, I think it will be a really interesting uh, content. And I don't know, share, share in the chat on, the, on these last minutes. Um, what are your thoughts? If you like what you have been listening, I know you guys are there, but you are super quiet. <laughs> um, and in the meantime, in the meantime, you think if you're going to say anything in the chat, I'm going to play you this yellow, this uh, almost the last one piece I'm going to play to you uh, this evening. And it, it refers to the moment when when the snow is really, really melting, the sunshine, it's 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 back there. Everything is slowly recovering some sort of pace um, and, and the water uh, becomes the new element. Mm, snow, it's pretty quiet, so to speak. But when it melts down, it becomes pretty much vivid. But this is happening in a really slow pace. The piece, it also evolves into a more musical um, uh, beat, which is the central part of the piece. Uh, and it's done using um, a shepherd's horn um, from the village. It was made out of, um, of the horn of a cow, I think. It was like carved manually. And it was used to, to call for the cattle to gather or whatever. Um, so I sampled the sound of that uh, horn and I used it to build um, the musical part of this uh, recording. Let's listen. It's it's all part of my album Aquí llega el invierno, which you can find it on my bandcamp also. Um, and yeah, let's listen to this.
yeah well that was it i think there were like three kinds of recordings there um the first ones with like more light uh, water falling from um, from ceilings or stuff like that um and then a follow-up recording at the end with more like water just really flowing down pipes and drains and stuff like that and then this middle part with um with the this kind of droneish um sampled sound which basically is is this this really short recording of of the horn that um, a shepherd just played for me uh, i didn't know even how to blow it so <laughs> he, he recorded that and i just took a fragment of it and um and there you go and that and that allowed me to down uh, pitch um um octavate it uh, mix it and and build this kind of um uh, momentum or or melody or i don't know if it if it it does uh, comply as a melody i'm not a musician so correct me if i'm wrong so that that's some sort of i don't know um process where you get to um in which field recordings sometimes end up being more um in the backdrop or just um, creating a mood a context um uh, a texture to what you do and then on top of that you add m a more digitalized more um out of the world um uh, musical harmonics uh, sample stuff and how these both things combine i think it's it's where i'm 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 happy working right now um and i don't know um before i finish i want to show you uh, one last piece from that album which is important because i think it ties pretty well um the stuff i've been talking about today which by the way i haven't talked that much about this kind of things before um those who have been on my workshops knows that i tend to stick to a script but i today i just went on a i don't know on a jam session of bullshit and comments about pieces i haven't listened before i i even listen to something i fucking hate right now so <laughs> it's it's really funny <laughs> anyway last piece i'm gonna play to you it's called estante and i think it's the first m super highly musical instrument i ever played um and it's in this small village and they have in the museum they have an ethnography museum of the shepherd life and stuff like that they have all these um cowbells and they have placed them um different um sizes of cowbells on a on a display to to the show on the museum that you can even touch if you want so i asked the the guy who runs the museum which is just one guy because the museum is like a small house uh, if i can go and record the cowbells because they are like ordered in in tune if i could go there and and just mess around with it and and use it for sampling purposes um so my plan with the, those cowbells was to just record tac 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 uh, hit it with a stick or whatever with my thumbs and stuff like that and then use it um um and post processed but i end up doing what you're gonna listen which is just one single take um and i think it's more or less okay from a musical standpoint it's a uh, one single recording of myself playing with the, those cowbells and i think it's the most <laughs> the, the only time in in my life i played something live really live um and the outcome is um, i'm pretty happy about it maybe i don't know maybe musicians are gonna say like well this is shit man but i'm super happy because i come from fine arts and, and this is um for me it's an achievement i'm gonna show it to you and and if you have to have something to say just say it afterwards <laughs>
Well, that was it. That was my first and last <laughs> attempt to to make um, kind of music with uh, cowbells. In this case, big cowbells, big ones are are for uh, I think it's male or large animals. Small cowbells are for um, for small ones. Um, yeah, aquí madera de cencerrista. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Thank you very much, um, all of you listening through um, this uh, three-hour and sixteen-minute-long um, first show for field recordings. I think I'm gonna do more in the future. Um, I might need um, some time to think about it. Um, to I don't know, figure out what's the best option, um, and see how how to do it more dynamically or at least not that exhausting. I don't know you guys, but I'm super exhausted right now. Um, it's super demanding, but it's really fun. It's my first time, so um, I'm super happy um, that um, at least some of you have been listening through the whole thing. Uh, then you can um, write me in private and, and rant about all the mistakes I made or, or the shitty, boring uh, screensaver I have put on Twitch to <laughs> when I'm not, when I don't have the webcam. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, thank you very much for joining. You guys who are not familiar with this channel, you know that every Sunday we are doing something. Um, we have been doing Ruido Virico for the last few months, which is a, a show kind of festival um, of concerts. And now we are shifting gears in the summer to to accommodate new things and to try out like this one, this um, this uh, broadcast show that it was an experiment and. And I think um, we're gonna do it more. So I don't know. Uh, subscribe, uh, follow us, um, stay with us, and every Sunday you'll get something around this. And I don't know if it's gonna be uh, myself. Is it's gonna be a special show featuring some of the gigs we have been playing on on the Twitch channel. But definitely there is something uh, gonna happen for sure. So thank you very much for, um, for being there. Um, stay safe and see you next week. Or I don't know who's going to be here next week. In any case, thank you very much and bye bye.